Welcome back to Grill This, Smoke That. This is going to be my first video cooking on the Blackstone specifically for this channel. I will have some other videos that I'm migrating over from my Tightwad DIY channel. Today we're going to be doing Japanese style hibachi. We have some vegetables, we have rice, we have shrimp, and we have steak. So let's go ahead and get started. I have the Blackstone already fired up and you can see we're not quite on full low here or here, but we are on full low here and here. I like to cook in two zones. So I'll have a colder side on this side and a warmer side on this side. Also went ahead and got everything prepped. So this is our filet. It has a little bit of hardcore carnivore black on it. I have some peeled large shrimp. I've got these from Sam's Club. I have some vegetables. There's some zucchini, some frozen broccoli, and some onions in here. I have eggs for the fried rice. I have the pre-cooked rice. This is jasmine rice that I cooked earlier this morning and left in the refrigerator all day to dry out a little bit. And then I have my sauces. So I have my soy sauce for the rice. I have sesame oil for the rice, teriyaki sauce, and then this is a teriyaki glaze. And this is where the sweetness comes from. I really like the teriyaki glaze as a finisher, but I don't cook a lot with it because it does caramelize quickly and burn. And then I have salt pepper and I have some seasoned salt. I have some garlic and I have some butter. So let's go ahead and get the rice on. I always start with the rice, then we'll get the veggies on and then we'll worry about the meats. First thing I'm going to do is get the eggs cooked and I have a little bit of avocado oil here, smeared around here, and then I'm going to dump my eggs on. Again, I already cracked them because I don't want my hands to get all dirty. My wife and daughters picked me this up for my birthday this year and I really like it to hold the spatulas out of the way. If you leave them on the side, there's a chance the handles will get burned. So I'm gonna get some salt and pepper on my eggs. I will be doing a, another video with the hibachi uh, tricks, like the different funny things they do at the restaurant. But today we're just doing the cooking. I'm gonna be moving my rice over to this side as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of the bowl. So I'm gonna put a little bit of oil down here. There's a lot of different ways to cook this rice. A lot of people, most people say that you cook it the day before and put it on a sheet pan and put it in the refrigerator so that it dries out. Now, I don't think that's absolutely necessary, but you definitely need to cook it at least uh, four or five hours beforehand. And I just leave it in the pot that it cooked in and put it in the refrigerator usually. I don't think you really need to spread it out on a sheet pan. There are times in the cooking process where you don't actually need to hear me talking, but you do need to see what I'm doing. So I do plan to fill that space with some of my favorite dad jokes because I absolutely love them. All right, we're gonna get that butter down on the bottom so it'll start melting. And I'm gonna get a little garlic going in here as well. So I'm making a little bit of a bowl in the middle here with the rice. Getting a good sized scoop of garlic there. You can use fresh garlic. Uh, I honestly hate dealing with it. So unless I'm cooking something really nice and fancy, I typically go with that jar of minced garlic. Now I've got to get all that mixed in. The butter's starting to melt. Get all the goodness going here. Well, as you're cooking the rice, try to chop up all the little balls in it. And then we're going to get some soy sauce on it. Don't you love it when the weather's perfect the day you're using your Blackstone outside? Our weather was so nice this weekend, I even got my garden planted. I got so excited, I wet my plants. I see a lot of people posting that they can't get the right flavor on their rice, and the key is sesame oil, but it's not a lot. So that's enough sesame oil we won't add anymore. And then my soy sauce. I'm going to get a little seasoned salt on here. A little pepper. And since that's all good and going now, I'm going to go ahead and get my vegetables started on this side. That broccoli was straight out of the bag frozen. That was a fresh, sweet onion. I'm from Georgia, the home of the Vidalia onions, so I prefer the Vidalia onions when they're in season. Um, so they should be coming soon, but right now we have just a regular sweet onion. And just keep mixing that rice the whole time. Anytime you're between steps with something else, mix up your rice a little bit. Spread it out thinner so that it gets a little more heat on it. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of avocado oil to the top of the vegetables and then grind some fresh cracked pepper on it and then we'll add some seasoning salt as well. A little garlic for my vegetables. Some butter for the vegetables. We'll be using one full stick of butter today. I'm gonna save some of it for the shrimp. And I'm gonna turn this side up a little bit to get this rice going so we can eat. So the next thing I'm going to be putting on is the steak. I do want my grill a little bit hotter when I'm cooking the steak and then the shrimp. But I want my rice cooked a little bit more before I get started with those. And these vegetables definitely need to cook down some more. I'm adding a little bit more low sodium soy sauce to the rice. It's not quite the color I want it to be, so I know that it's not going to be salty enough, so this is going to help with the flavor. I'm going to add a little bit of soy sauce onto our, or sorry, teriyaki sauce on our vegetables over here. Just like with the rice, keep those vegetables turned. I'm losing my onions here. So your hottest spots on your blackstone is obviously going to be right over your burners. And it's also about four inches in from each side. So notice I don't keep everything, anything on the edge, anywhere on the blackstone that I want to still be cooking. The edges are for cooling down or for keeping warm. This rice is starting to brown up now. Looking good. We like ours just a little bit of crisp on it, so that's why I keep spreading it out thin. If you like it less crispy, keep it in a pile. If you like your vegetables cooked down and softer, you can use one of your domes to cover them up. I personally like mine to have a little bit of a crunch. So when you steam them with that dome on, it tends to make them softer, so I don't use it. All right, I'm gonna turn this one up. So I've got my third one I'm turning up now to continue cooking this rice. So I'm about to go ahead and get my steak and shrimp on. I'm gonna get this side going hotter. So I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way up to high heat on this left side burner. Ooh, look at that nice crispy brown on the outside of that rice. That's what we're looking for. So this rice is almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and get the shrimp on. The vegetables could be eaten right now if they needed to be. But we're gonna let them cook down a little bit more. I like a little bit of char on my veggies. It's time to get the shrimp going. I'm gonna put down a little avocado oil, then dump the shrimp on. Again, these are from Sam's Club. They're the easy peel, so I've already peeled them and they were deveined previously. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter and some garlic and some seasoned salt to them. Don't need a ton of salt because that teriyaki is really gonna soak into them and season them the rest of the way. A little bit of teriyaki coming. And then we'll hit them with the glaze. So when I hit the, this point, what I typically do is go inside and wash my spatulas because they have raw meat on them. So those shrimp are cooked enough now that it's not going to cause a big issue if we consume food that was touching them. This rice is done. You can take a little taste test if you want to. Oh yeah. I'm going to leave my bowl sitting on top of it for a second so that it heats up the bowl so it doesn't cool the rice. These vegetables are almost done, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the gas on the right side of my grill here. Both of these two are turned off, and I'm just going to leave my vegetables on here while everything else gets finished. I'm just going to push this into the back corner as well. These shrimp are getting close, so we're going to be waiting on that steak a little bit. I recommend taking the steak off the griddle to cut it up, not because you'd mess up your griddle, but because metal on metal is going to dull your knife. All right, now it's time for the glaze. So this is where that teriyaki glaze comes in. A little bit on the shrimp. Thick and sweet. A little bit on the steak. I'm 
when the meats are done, we're ready to eat. And remember, I turned this side to full high here, so this steak's going to cook quickly. It's going to get nice and seared on the outside. I know I've got your mouth watering now, and I know you're going to want to see more of my videos, so you can really help me out by clicking that thumbs up. The steak you cook to your doneness, I like mine between medium rare and medium, so that is good. Let's get these vegetables off. And that is it, it is time to eat. Turn all my gas off here. Check out the video linked in the top right corner to see how I clean it. And let's eat, y'all. I hope you guys found this video helpful. The most difficult part of fixing hibachi is making sure everything finishes at a similar time so you don't have anything getting cold. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I always try to respond to every one of them. If you want to talk even more, look me up on Instagram at grill this, smoke that. I'd love to correspond back and forth with you there and you can see what cooks are coming soon. Click any of the videos showing on the screen right now and they'll open right up on your device. And as always, I hope you guys have a great day.